Amy Farrell's traditional art brings whimsical fantasy to life with a touch of warmness that just melts the heart of the viewer. Conveying such level of emotion isn't easy, and Amy is the living proof that you can do it without any formal training. You can find more of her artwork at amyillustration.com, but for now, please join us as we talk about how Inktober can accelerate your art skills, using hashtags to grow your social media, and turning art comparison into something positive. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etcherlab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Anya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. So Amy, when did you first fell in love with art? I, I didn't really know that, you know, you could have art as a career mm -hmm. until I was about 19 mm -hmm. so okay. really late in the stage otherwise you know I've I've been a pretty average um, person I would say I've, I've always drawn since I was pretty young um, how young um like the first time that I can remember actually creating like something that I've been looking at like I, I was sitting out in my window I think when I was about six mm -hmm. uh, in my bedroom and just trying to draw like the backyard oh. um yeah urban sketching so. from such a young age we're yeah, using what thinking. like call like pencil colors crayons I'm just imagining little Amy by her window yeah it was mostly just like a pencil at that point with like the lined sketchbook Uh, well, not really sketchbook, notebook. And just so I have like a mental timeline, mind you telling me how old you are right now? Um, right now I'm 25. So, so as a career, quote unquote, you started seven years ago. Yeah, seven years ago. Um, when I first graduated uh, high school, actually. And that's when you started thinking seriously on like making like air quotes, seriously, uh, like you're not taking art seriously then, only after you graduated high school. How, I'm looking at your Instagram, I was just looking at your Instagram feed uh, before our interview, because I, I love going through your feed, because it just makes me feel so relaxed and at ease, because your art is so heartwarming, it has a special kindness to it that I feel every time I see one of your paintings. How did you... You loved creating art. You were not thinking of it as a career because it was not something tangible in your head at the time. How did you get so good? Oh, that is a good question. Um, so it's, I think it's it's mostly been, like when, when I graduated from high school, um, I took a year off mm -hmm. um, to try and figure out um, if you know I wanted to go to university or college. Um, for something because I knew that I wanted to do art I just didn't know uh, the grand scheme of mm -hmm. all the different career options that you yeah. could go into at the time because I was thinking like oh I'll just do a bachelor's of arts and and then you'll figure it yeah. out as you go that's right yeah I, I was living with my grandmother at the time mm -hmm. so I got to take that year off mm -hmm. and I was learning a lot from um, YouTube videos mm -hmm. that were available online luckily. Um, and that really helped to motivate me going, oh, no, these people could do it. So I can do it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So is your whimsical style something that you developed? Because I've known you for five years, more or less. And you've always had that whimsical, soft, cute style since the beginning. And now that I'm learning that you started this as a career, you know, shortly before we even met. Because looking at your art, you have like forest people, dreamsy things. You have a lot of nature there. Where the, did that theme selection come from? Um, I'd say that it's definitely from how I grew up as mm -hmm. well. Like I watched a lot of TV and a lot of anime uh, and animation mm -hmm. growing up. Uh -huh. So I have I have a love for that and especially uh, Studio Ghibli films. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, not to mention, um, we would go camping like um, every uh, every summer. Um, my grandmother and like a bunch of my cousins. Uh, so just being out in the you know in the forest for like a month or just a couple weeks really helped to oh, so bring in that theme for nature. Uh -huh. Yeah. In the Ghibli thing. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I'm very curious to understand why you chose art as a means to express yourself. Why does that talk so loudly in your heart? Why does it matter so much? And you just told me the other day that you were, I mean, why not music? And you said that you were considering music for a time, so which is another creative venue. So care to elaborate a little bit on that? When did you start pursuing music? When was that? Um, yeah, so um, when I was actually in the fifth grade, um, they had us all go into a room and uh, they brought in a bunch of different instruments and it's like, oh, you can play instruments. And uh, this is fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, they were showing off like flutes and trumpets and trombones. And then they brought in the clarinet. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so... From grade five until about grade 12, I played the clarinet. Um, wow, that's like, that's a lot of time playing one instrument. You really loved it. I did, yeah. I actually haven't played it for a couple of years since I started making art. But that was also another career option, which I was trying to figure out. Um, yeah, yeah, so you were clearly very creative. You, were, you, you clearly needed something creative to drive your... Uh, and I'm assuming your emotions somewhere, because uh, I, I, I mean, I'm thinking art is a way to express emotions. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Oh, on totally. That? Yeah. Um, like the current art that I create, um, and I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that or this, but um, when I'm creating a piece, I, I'm not. It's it's not really a theme that I'm basing it solely off of. It's I'm just letting myself, like express what I want to feel uh -huh. and when I create this art that's warm and comfortable it, it just makes me feel safe and happy that's beautiful I don't know. It, yeah wow wow well I think sorry I'm thinking about that that makes a lot of sense and it resonates with me on a very deep level because um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in other podcast interviews when I was working on my children's book I was um, trying, in, in order to convey the feelings I wanted to convey, I was going through pictures and memories that I had with my sister because my story is about the relationship between sisters. So I yeah. was always like delving into what I felt and how could I express those feelings through my art. And I think that relates a lot to what you're saying, which is, so your creativity has always been a way for you to express yourself emotionally. And I think that... I think that's very important and I think we should dig deeper here. Yeah. Clarinet was fifth grade, but art became way, you know, four years earlier because you remember like you have memories since you were six doing art. Yeah, yeah. Not to mention, um, of course, I don't know how many other people go through this phase, but I had an anime phase. Uh -huh. So, and um, it was myself and then um, my cousin on both my dad's side and my mom's side. Mm -hmm. We would draw a lot together. Um, uh, so being able to draw with them, and we would draw like late into the night. It would be like 2 o'clock a.m. or a.m. And we would just be drawing like anime characters based off of uh, the computer screen. And yeah, so that, that was another like development that really helped to just... Uh, like build up that love of drawing I wow. think and did you were any of your parents artists or anyone in your family or um my cousins you know um they, they haven't pursued it uh professionally but mm -hmm. they they definitely enjoy drawing mm -hmm. um my grandfather painted with uh oils sometimes mm -hmm. I only painted with them once it was when I was I think 11 or 12 and I right. haven't used them since but it's some that I'd like to go back into and so you were already super in love with art when you were in college and you wanted to make a living out of it why was that so important to you oh um well I I didn't get to go to college 
Aha. That's that's the main thing. Yeah. Tell me more about it. Um, yeah, so of course, um, I, I didn't really want to take that risk of being in student debt mm -hmm. for something because I, I knew at the age of 19 that I wanted to do art. I was just a little bit lost and I didn't know how mm -hmm. to make a career out of art. And um, uh, with student debt being so high, um, I didn't want to be paying that off for how many years along with whatever else bills and just the normal so living. Did you, so did you study something else or did you focus your full time on art since then? It's, uh, it's been full time on art. And of course, I've been working um, part time and full time jobs. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. While you're in between. Things out. And so why did you make that? that this, is, this is huge. This is important. This is what I'm trying to get at. Art is so important to you that you went against the status quo of, mm. you know, because everybody's like, have to go to school, have to go to college, get a good degree, work on that degree. And that's simply not the reality of our world anymore. I don't think so. I think that not everybody benefits from a college degree. It really depends on what they love and what they want to study. Uh, some college degrees are great. And if you want to be a lawyer, of course, you need to go to college. But there are many things you don't need to go to college for. And you might learn a lot more if you don't go. It really depends on the kind of college, of course. And no one, I don't know, at least in my country, I see that there's a lot of prejudice against people who do not have a college degree, which I don't understand fully. Because... I know, for example, in my field, I studied graphic design and I know graphic designers that are amazing and they never went to college, you know. Uh, yeah. And when they say, oh, I've never I never went to college, people are shocked. And I'm like, well, why are you shocked? You don't need to go to college to learn how to be a really good graphic designer if you really have the thirst of knowledge. So I don't know. I feel it's a bit similar with art, depending on what you want to do, of course. But our society right. is changing and, you know, when my grandmother was alive, you know, they were rewarded for spending 30 years at the same company and they would get a medal. And that was, you know, a motive to be proud of, to spend, you know, 30 years working at the same company because that's how you did a living. You went to school, you graduated, you had good grades, you went to college or university, whatever, and then you were hired to do this job and you would move along in the corporate world within that same company and get better position and claw your way until the top and then you're retired and do whatever you want with your the rest of your life. That's just simply not the world we live in anymore. Uh, and, and COVID made it very visible to everybody what I think you and I already knew for some time, which is you do not need to be physically in a company to work there. Remote work is completely possible and it's not easy. I think, working remotely. But that's a full rant that I will not drag you into. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can totally make a living out of what you love and live from somewhere else. Like, for example, I'm working with Etcher. Etcher is an Australian company. I'm in Portugal. I've never been to Australia yet. So, you know, times have changed. So with that in mind, you decided at a time that we're still changing, though times have changed, quote unquote, we are still changing. The mentality is still not completely open to I do not need a college degree to be successful at what I love. It's still not a thing that is publicly acceptable worldwide. So it took a little bit, more than a little bit of courage, I, I dare say, for you to jump into the art world and give it your best shot, not going to college. Why was art so important to you? What is it about art that you want to pursue it with claw and teeth? Um, yeah, just being able to express myself uh, in the form of art has been really helpful, I think. Um, just, you know, growing as a person as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's two different things. Um, I found that because, of course, I was living in the same small town for about seven years because um, I recently just moved to Victoria. Um, again, you caught me really early in my career. Like, this mm -hmm. is my very first year of being mm -hmm. a freelance illustrator. Um, and I've still given myself the out to be able, well, you know, if, if I really need to, I can go back 
to a minimum wage job mm-hmm. um, and work part time, uh, which for, you know, about two years ago, I, I was being really hard on myself mm. um, that I had to make money via, you know, a, a part time job and not just off of my art. Because, uh, and I think that that's a really big distinction that people need to separate mm-hmm. is that art. Um, it, it doesn't just have to be for paying the bills. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually found that when I was making art specifically only to make money, that's when a lot of the joy from the project mm-hmm. actually, uh, you know, left. Yeah. 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 That d- does make a lot of sense. What are your favorite mediums? Um, favorite mediums. Uh, have always been, uh, well, not always, but um, currently <laughs> pencil color mm-hmm. and watercolor have been uh, the two main ones that I've been enjoying and just combining those. And do you have any tips and tricks that you can share with us on some discoveries that you made with those? Yeah, because, um, of course, when I first started out, um, it was just, you know, regular old pencil and paper. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know what it is about the softer styles without the harsher lines. Cause when, when I first started to create art, when I was, um, or even experimenting more when I was like 14, um, I would try to, you know, emulate what I saw, um, like manga artists doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So using like the bold, um, ink lines. Mm-hmm. So I would only work uh, in inks for about, it was about, I think two years. I was like obsessed with doing outlines Mm -hmm. and inking. Mm -hmm. Um, but then that gradually decreased, uh, definitely recently. Um, so if, if you want to create like a softer, uh, feel, try holding your pencil, I guess, um, lighter Mm -hmm. and not pushing down so hard on the paper that way you can build up the layers over and over um and even smudging as well helps to really create that softer uh feel yeah how do you my my issue when i try to do pencils is i go way too soft you know everything is smudgy and soft how do you balance out how do you how do how do you know when to go soft and when to pull back on the softness uh that is a good question um, and one that you will probably demo for us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. And, and just for context, guys, so on November 6th, Amy will do a live demo. And uh, what, what will you demo for, for us this coming Friday? Um, yeah, that'll be, um, I'll be doing a flower sprite for you guys. So hopefully you like that. Uh, in pencils, and it's going to be a uh, one wash of watercolor mm-hmm. and then colored pencils on top of that. Okay, so you can teach me then how on earth you manage to have the softness so soft and not way too soft all over the drawing and everything looks smudgy when I do it. So you will teach me how to balance things, right? You'll save my yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. I, I'm actually very much looking forward for that uh, for that live demo because uh, your art is delicious. But yeah, so big struggles that you found while exploring these mediums. Anything that comes to mind, like art struggles as you were le- learning new tools? Um, the, the only like art struggles that I've had is when I try to make it, you know, when I try to monetize it, that's when everything kind of bogs down on me and I oh. get um, like over, I, I overthink things at that point mm-hmm. when it becomes related to, uh, to money. Um, but otherwise, uh, I, I think because I didn't have somebody telling me, you know, you shouldn't drop that or you shouldn't do this. Um, otherwise it's, it's, it's just been drawing what I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, or, well, not even what I enjoy. Cause of course, um, I did anatomy when I was, you know, when I got out of that anime phase, mm-hmm. um, and decided, okay, well, how do you actually draw, like, the human body? Mm-hmm. Um, and I would watch YouTube videos about, you know, gesture drawing mm-hmm. and uh, anatomy-based mm-hmm. drawing. 
and I, I would try my best and it's it's really beneficial to go back and look at those at those older pieces I find mm-hmm. just to see what kind of level you've actually grown um, okay, that's over a the good past tip. several years. That's a great tip. How often do you do that? Um, not as much recently, but when I was first starting, uh, uh, you know, to do these more realistic drawings when I was 19, it would be like, I'd say every month. Mm-hmm. And I, I literally have, when I move um, recently, um, I have just boxes filled with these old drawings. Mm-hmm. Um, like, they're not precious or anything, but I just like keeping them to, to as a record of to literally show my growth. To compare yourself to you instead of being overwhelmed with social media. Yeah, you got it. Because that can be really overwhelming too, mm-hmm. um, I found. Yeah. How so? Um, just because, of course, what I've come to terms with is everybody is on their own journey. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we all have our own paths that we're uh, going down, especially with art. Because um, life does, it, it gets busy and it, you know, yeah. you have to have that balance. Ever, ever since I got my, my son... I got my son. I got him from the store. <laughs> Ever since he was born, That's I've it been learning how to organize everything from scratch. Uh, it's, um, you know, I don't know, in on social media and, you know, where, wherever you look, you feel like people are telling you that you have to organize yourself and find a balance when actually you need to keep con- on. It's not something you do. I believe it's something you keep on doing all the time. You keep on reorganizing yourself, fi- finding the balance yourself because, you know, what you love to do changes, your priority changes when something big happens, like having a son or when you get sick. And it's a constant struggle to organize yourself, I think. Yeah. Talking about organizing yourself, how did you go about growing the social media following you have right now? Um. So... When I first started Instagram, or posting my art, I should say, on Instagram, that was mm-hmm. back in 20, was it 2014 or 2015? Um, I was actually influenced by uh, uh, Inktober mm. to start posting. Yeah, that was, and I actually archived a bunch of my old work, which I kind of wish I hadn't, because I don't know if you're like me, um, where uh, you go through different artists' feed, and you're like, oh, that's where they began, like, look at their growth wow Uh, like i i love seeing that um so definitely looking at how other artists have you know been able to grow their followings uh uh, has been really beneficial Uh um and i'm i I don't know if people uh already know this but like using hashtags and Mm -hmm. how how would you can you share some hashtag tips um, kind of, I guess. I just look at, again, just looking at what other artists are using for their hashtags and which ones are relevant, I suppose, mm-hmm. like to the post specifically. Mm-hmm. Like I'll use a lot of like, um, uh, like watercolor or pencil color and uh, spelling that both like how I spell it in Canada and then the US version as uh-huh. well. Because yeah. a big part of your following might be in the U.S., so you want to make sure to reach those through the hashtag. Yeah, yeah, you got it. That's why I, I posted English, too, not in Portuguese. Yeah, 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 I noticed that, too. Um, looking back at our audience and those who are, you know, uh, trying to start art either as hobbyist or professional, that doesn't matter, or trying to learn a new medium, since you are so much self-taught and, you know, you learn so much by yourself by looking at other artists... Uh, I wonder if you have any tips you can uh, leave our audience any piece of advice. Yeah, I guess just don't be too hard on yourself. Um, you'll, you know, it. Don't focus so much on trying to find your style. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times, the style, um, you know, it will come out naturally. I guess, um, oh. and before you even realize it. Um, when you show it to other people can be really beneficial as well because they'll be like, Oh, you draw really cute, really whimsical. And it's like, Oh, is that what I do? Um, yeah. Yeah. That but so again, just, just take your time and it, it can be hard sometimes, but enjoy the process. 
Want to learn from Amy? Then please join her this coming Friday, November 6th at 4 p.m. LA time. Find the link to join and all the other links on the post associated with this episode at etcherlab.com forward slash feral. That's A-T-C-H-R-L-A-B dot com forward slash F-A-R-R-E-L-L. Please jump in that blog post and let us know your thoughts on this episode. Amy and I would love to hear it. Like the podcast? Help us support the show by subscribing and giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etrelab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. See you in the next episode and until then, let's make more art. I need more coffee in my life. Oh, bring me coffee so I can wake up.